Welcome to another Parent Teacher Video Lesson from the EarlyGiftedManual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. So now let's measure an object that's longer than one foot. And as you can see, I've put out on uh, the table here my trusty wiffle ball bat. And we're going to use a, a, a few different methods of measuring that. And the first method we're going to use is something called leapfrogging. And we're going to need two rulers for that. And I've actually had to alter these rulers a little bit. And I hope I can show this to you. Here's Here's the ruler that we have been using, and here's the, the ruler I'm going to be using for this. And if you can see, there's a little extra length past the gradation on each end. Well, I just took a, an X-Acto knife and trimmed that off. It, it's very light wood. It took almost no time at all. Because in leapfrogging, the measuring stick, the ruler, has to start right at the zero and end right at the foot, the 12 inch mark. So easy enough to do. Do that to two of these rulers. Or you could use rulers you might have that are set up like this, the way I just described. Okay, what is leapfrogging with two rulers? Here's how it works. Of course, we always line up the edge of the ruler with the edge of the object to be measured. And I'll start out by doing that. And uh, this, and, and of course, this shape is a little odd, so we're not going to be able to hug the edge. So I'm going to start out with one ruler there, and I'm going to place the next ruler right there. And now here's what leapfrogging is. So we know that's one foot, that's two feet, so it's longer than two feet. So, and but I only have two rulers. Hmm, I'm going to have to do something here. So here's what I do. I hold this one down very firmly, and that's very important to explain that to your child, because if this moves around, you will not get an accurate measurement. And now I'm going to take this one and place it like that. So that solves the problem of not having enough uh, foot rulers. So we know there is one foot, two foot, and then a portion of three feet and I'm looking down here, it looks like about three feet and eight inches. And of course, if you want to, you can convert that into all inches um, for, for your child. And uh, let's see, two feet, uh, excuse me, two feet, eight inches, which of course comes out to uh, uh, 32 inches. I just did that in my head. So you can make that conversion and uh, explain how that works to your child. So we've established, at any rate, that uh, my wiffle ball bat is uh, 32 inches long. What's another way we could do that? That's leapfrogging. Another way is called marking off. Let's say you only had one ruler. Um, once again, line up the edge. Um, some people use their finger to do this. Some people use a marker. Let's say I wanted to be a little more accurate. So I'm going to use this dry erase marker here because I know I can take it off my table. So I'm going to mark the edge of this ruler and then bring this one over and put it right where I marked it. So there's two. Make a mark in the edge. And there's the next eight inches on the third ruler. So a total of 32 inches. Um, so that's uh, called marking off. And, you know, let's say you don't have a marker. I'm going to take these marks off here. 
you can always use your finger. Obviously, it's not as accurate, but uh, let's see, I only need one ruler. You could do it like this. Line up the edges, put your finger down there, and go by the middle of your finger. Slide this along like that. And of course, do the same thing. And there you have it, still 32 inches. Of course, that's not exactly the most accurate way to measure something, but it gives you a pretty good, pretty reasonably uh, good figure as to you know what you're dealing with here, how many inches. And I proved it because uh, it, every measurement came out to just about 32 inches. All right, that's called marking off. And of course, uh, like I said, you could do that with a your finger, uh, a marker or a pencil. And now you could show your child a, a new measuring tool, uh, which of course uh, we adults know as the yardstick, but you can introduce the yardstick uh, to your child. And the best way to explain the yardstick would be, well, um, the yardstick is three 12 inch rulers, which we of course have been using all put together end to end. And it's like if you could connect them together, you'd have a yardstick. So uh, you could actually, if you have three 12 inch uh, rulers, you could actually show your child uh, that that in fact is true. Uh, and, and I hope you do because kids love to have proof of everything. So uh, we have the yardstick and the unit of measurement, the new unit of measurement is called the yard. And how much is a yard? Well, since it's uh, three rulers, that means it's three feet. And as you can see here, and you could show this to your child, look, there's 36 inches. You can't see the 36 number because it's right at the edge there, but um, the yardstick is three feet long, 36 inches long. So you can kind of uh, uh, work a little bit with this idea of, e of equivalencies. And um, the, the beauty of the yardstick is uh, you can tell your child, well, we don't have to leapfrog to measure this anymore. We have one measuring tool that will measure the whole thing. So let's, uh, let's measure the wiffle ball bat here. I'm going to line up this edge over here, of course. and uh, 32 inches, which is the measurement we've been getting. So it does agree with the leapfrogging, but obviously a much easier task and probably uh, much more accurate since we're not uh, uh, using several uh, tools of measurement and, and leapfrogging with them. So 32 inches, it agrees uh, more or less with uh, our leapfrogging measurement. And uh, so, you know, uh, you can make the point to your child at this point uh, uh, in your lesson, and that is uh, choose the measuring tool to fit the measuring task. So if you've got an object like this wiffle ball bat that's longer than a foot, but it's maybe less than, you know, a, a huge uh, measurement, this is, uh, uh, this is the proper tool to use, a yardstick. This is the easiest tool to use to get a good measurement on something as long as, as this wiffle bat. So uh, you, you can't say that enough to your child. Choose the measuring tool to fit the measure, measuring task. And of course, over time with a lot of experience, um, your child will certainly pick up on that and become much, uh, much more skilled at, in fact, choosing the right tool. So, um, and maybe you could also uh, kind of emphasize again this idea of standard units of measurement. And those standard units are the inch, the foot, and the yard, and perhaps work with uh, the equivalencies back and forth between those measurements. And now let's introduce yet another measurement tool. And here it is, the tape measure. And uh, in my informal survey, I, I would 
I think almost every household has one of these. It's hard to find one that doesn't. It's a very, very handy thing to have. And, uh, and of course, you want to, to show your child everything about it, how to use it. So uh, um, show him how the tape comes out. And if you let go, it comes back in. That's important. It's kind of uh, spring-loaded, so to speak. Um, let's see, what's another feature? Uh, this particular tape measure goes to 25 feet, so you can actually take it all the way out and show him just how long it is. It has a lock button. That's this red button up here. So let's pull it up, pull some out, press the button down, and look. It's not going to come back in. It's locked. And at this point, you would want to show him or her that it's very dangerous when you all of a sudden press the lock button. I'm going to get my fingers out of the way because it does this, and it could really hurt his or her finger if, if uh, her finger is in there. So what you want to do is teach them a technique for breaking, meaning like a car brake, breaking the tape with their fingers. So let's say they release it, and look. They can just, with varying pressure, they can slide it in much more slowly, and that's a much safer way to use the tape measure. Um, what else can I tell you about the tape measure? Uh, when you're doing longer distances, um, you, will need, you may need two people, unless, as you can see, there's a little latch on the end here, a little piece of metal. Let's see, what can I, let me get a book out here and show you. I'm going to put the book down, and it can catch on the edge of things. So isn't that handy? So let's say you're measuring something 15 feet long. If it has an edge like this, you can go all the way down to the other end, get your length or whatever measurement you're looking for without needing another person to line it up with the edge. Of course, if there is no edge, then you will need two people to operate this when you're working on very long distances. So um, you almost have to expect that. So, uh, but that should be explained to your child. And of course, uh, measure a few things, uh, some things that have a lip like this, so to speak, and, and don't. And, and you can measure a, a few different things with, um, with your uh, tape measure here. And uh, let's see, what else? I think I've uh, just about covered everything. Let me put this book out of the way. How to read it. Of course, I'm left-handed, so I always use it like this. Let's, let's flip it around. How to read. I'm going to put the lock on it here. And as you can see, just like all of our other measuring devices, it's uh, one-inch gradations going across. And look at how, uh, how nice this is. When you get to a foot, they give you an extra... Uh, little thing there that tells you you're at one foot. As you can see, that's done at every foot. There's 24 inches and that's two feet, so that's a really nice uh, nice thing to have. And as you can see, uh, um, obviously uh, tape measures are made for right-handed people, so I hope I don't drive you crazy using it here. Uh, I guess I'm just going to have to switch over to using it uh, right-handed. I'm going to have to suffer through it. And of course, you can line it up with your, with your yardstick and show them that yes, an inch is the same on every measuring device. It'll line right up. So uh, that, that, of course, is very important. And finally, you could remove the yardstick. And I would say this isn't going to latch onto there because it has a rounded edge. So since it's short enough, I'm going to line it up with the edge. And watch what I do. Um, I don't want to be struggling with this wanting to come back in, so I'm going to go a little longer than I need to go. Press down the lock. Then I'm going to come over here and line up the end with the end of the bat. And look at that, 32 inches, the same measurement. Uh, we got with all the other measuring devices. So that is the tape measure, and of course it really comes into its own when you're, when you're measuring larger things. Like for example, uh, if you have an area rug in your house, be sure to uh, you and your child can work together to measure the length and the width 
of your area rug. And of course, on and on and on. Practice a lot. Uh, show your child, here I go left-handed, they're upside down. Uh, show your child how to read the tape. You know, you can, she can read it. Uh, well, I'd say at this point, just inches, and you could show her that there's other ways to read, like three feet, three inches, and, uh, you know, that's obviously how, what, why I always try to say, you know, isolate the concept. That's adding on a little bit. So don't go on to that until you're sure they know, uh, he or she knows how to, to read, uh, read the, the tape measure, read, the, read lengths uh, on the tape measure. And once again, let's say it's locked. Uh, keep, keep this lesson going. Uh, hold on to it before before you release that lock, and then you can very break it slowly back into the body of the tape measure. And now let's take a look at uh, what I call the tailor's tape, the flexible tape. Uh, this one's made out of plastic, and in the olden days, they used to be made out of cloth. I think most of them are plastic now, but. Um, the strength of, of the tailor's tape, obviously, is it can go uh, on curved surfaces. And uh, it's really a great thing for measuring what's known as the circumference of objects. So there's a, yet another vocabulary word for your child. Uh, and of course, what do we mean by circumference? Well, here I have uh, an oatmeal container. And let's say um, you wanted to know the distance this way around the, uh, the linear distance around the uh, container. That's called the circumference. So here's, here's how you would do it. You would take, and I'm going to lay it on its side so you can see it a lot easier. You would take the uh, Taylor's tape. Hold it, hold it down very uh, firmly there. Make sure it's nice and tight. Bring the other side up around like this, where it's just touching this edge. And look at that. It's exactly the circumference of this um, oatmeal canister or container is exactly 16 inches. So that's the, uh, the strength of the Taylor's tape, and of course, uh, you've heard me, I'm, I'm becoming repetitive, you heard me say it, but it's the right tool for, for the right measuring task. And of course, if uh, it's a big circumference, like a swimming pool or something like that, or even something that's beyond your reach, it's a two-person job, just like the tape measure, it can sometimes be a two-person task. And of course, let me move this out of the way here. Of course, um, one of the main things that, that this is used for, uh, uh, they don't call it a tailor tape for no reason, is it's used by tailors, people who uh, custom make clothes to measure uh, body parts, like the length, uh, you could, and you could show this to your child. You could measure his arm. You could measure the length of his leg. You could measure around, uh, his waist to give him a waist measurement and around his neck and talk a little bit about how there are these people called tailors who who make custom clothes for people of course back in the old days uh, anybody who made clothes was a tailor of course we know that's different now so the tailor makes uh, custom clothes made to fit people and that's how they do it they use a tailor's tape to to make the correct measurements so that the clothes can be the right size for the person wearing them.